This is Eric Knight from Echo Technologies Group, a pioneer within the field of biochar, and we wanted to ask you a few quick questions. So first sure. of all, uh, for the people who don't know anything, what is biochar? Well, it's a <coughs> way to a uh, newer soil amendment that's unlike any other because it doesn't go away. It stays in the soil. It's an infrastructure for for providing a home for the microbes and the soil food web. The mycorrhizal fungi and the microbes find a purchase and microbes like to sit down when they eat and then they can truly attack the minerals in the soil. And the fungus is an interstate highway that carries moisture and carries the nutrients to the plant roots, the symbiotic relationship. And not only that, it's the internet of plant chemical communication. So all in one, one plant is assaulted at this part of the field by a bug, by a pathogen. The plants at the other end of the field within hours are producing the chemicals to fight off that assault. It's, it's not just feeding the plant, it's feeding the soil, but it's beyond that. It's providing uh, hydroxyl, fat, uh, hydroxyl alcohols in the minibar. It's carbolic fat in the, in, in, in the pantry. It's the utilities for free. It's, 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 the, you know, it's cable TV for free. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and why is biochar so important right now? What is its potential? Well, I, I think it's most important by what you just saw. Of course. It scales from the smallest pyrolytic stove that costs three to five dollars to all the way up to E. coli, uh, uh, to, to uh, the best. So what, just to interrupt you, then, I mean, what we just saw was uh, how biochar can help um, protect forests simply by changing the, the routines of how people you know, well, well, see, that's, practices. That's, the, that's the beauty. As a child, I lived in Africa, um, and there's a passion for life when you suffer being subject to nature. When you're a subsistence farmer and you see, you know, in a year now or next, and your grandparents may not be there. Okay? But it leads to this robust. If I were king, I would have every American required to live in a subsistence farming, whatever country, because that 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 lust for life is is almost a result. I mean, most Americans or Westerners think of subsistence farms, suffering, drudgery, and and biochar, these small pyrolytic stoves can give time. A woman, I mean, and the women do all this work. Ten miles to get to, to deforest. She, now they can take dung, grasses, from right, right near the house. Lunch is now being served in room 22240. Um, Please make uh, your way to the second yeah. floor, room 22240 for lunch. time to, to educate their children. Their children don't, don't get, rest, don't get uh, black lung. They don't get emphysema. The, 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 you know, the kids don't die. Food security, uh, when, when you increase by what Lawrence Rodemaker just said, 200, 270%. I mean, you know, this, this is, is, and it provides uh, a, a, a sustainable, well, it provides the respect that this life, this pastoral, it, it, so the kids don't have to vote with their feet to go to a moneyed economy. They, they can truly appreciate the, the traditional pastoral culture. Um, and, and that's a small scale. Now on the big scale, on the industrial western scale, it, it saves us it, we, we, from soil mining ourselves in the rat race of NPK. Because over the long haul, there are only been two civilizations that have ever maintained fertility on the millennium scale. The Egyptians, because of the geologic advantage of the Nile, and the Kayapo Indian people of the Amazon, because 
be learned, not to burn the forest, but to char the forest. And to this day, since they died out of Western disease, that soil is six foot deep, totally black, and it's as fertile as that they left it yesterday. And if we could do that in our commercial agricultural sector, if we could marry organic practice with agricultural, industrial, agricultural practice, we could break that. We could be a first civilization that could maintain fertility for a millennium and beyond. Thank you very much, yeah. Eric. This was one, one more thing. Can you speak also about the uh, the climate change mitigation? Well, well, uh, well that's, that's, yes. that's the icing yeah. on the cake. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I've been working with uh, Gary DeLong with no, uh, no back to, uh, for a agricultural carbon standard to give farmers the money for their good work. All farmers, whether they believe in global warming or not, know in their heart that building soil carbon is good for them, their bottom line, and their kids. And it's good for the atmosphere. And it's, they don't need to believe in global warming because they know it's a nonpartisan issue. It's all about the only final account, judge and jury, of sustainability is whether you're building your soil carbon or whether you're mining your soil carbon. And I am doing everything I can to get farmers that respect the soil think bankers. Our bankers since the recession have lost respect. And that respect should be to the farmer. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.